you have a plane with vector in it. You want to put DJI in it, but don't because you can't have OSD. Today I'm going to show you how. Stay tuned. So I did a quick build series for the uh, Eagle Tree Vector. Uh, the big complaint with it is that you can get, uh, DJ, if you put a DJI system in it, you can't get the OSD. You can on iNav, you can on Betaflight, but uh, if you have Vector, you've kind of been out of luck. Well, I ran into a couple of guys that uh, had a workaround with it with an Arduino Nano board. I got it all set up, got it put in, I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, it works great. I can't get any flight footage for you, unfortunately, because we've got a hurricane and it's been raining a lot. But uh, it's in, it's working. I'm going to show you some footage. If you have any questions, let us know. Thanks. Okay, so one of the first things you're going to do is flash the board with the right hex. So I'm going to go over that right now. So you want to go to Xloader. And the best place to get this, if you go to the GitHub, you'll see the... Uh, you go to GitHub, you'll see the uh, hex file there, and that's the one that you're going to want to get. All right. So the big thing about it is you want to check this baud rate <clears throat> because it comes in, it's uh, default is wrong. So you want to set the baud rate at 115, 200. We're already on COM six, is where it's uh where it's found my where it's found my little card at, and we're gonna choose what we have, which is gonna be the nano. All right, so let's find our file. My file happens to be under. But, all right, so now we're going to upload it to our thing. So when the lights change just like that, you can see how it went from its other oh, blinking to that. That's a good sign. That means that it is loading. And it's going to tell you how many bytes were uploaded. And that's it. All right, so now you've got your Arduino flashed with the right hex file. We're going to go over to the bench and do some soldering. Okay, so we're just going to put on our uh, voltage regulator real quick. So I'm going to turn the wires and get it put in. So here's where we are, and I've got the uh, Cappy 2 out here is what we're going to be putting in uh, this Arduino board in. So the soldering couldn't be easier as far as the setup goes. You've got five leads that you got to do. The biggest thing for me is I'm going to try to do it in place uh, so I don't have to unwire everything and then put it all back together. So what I do have, I've got my leads for the air unit. All you're going to need is, of course, the power and uh, your white lead on there, which is going to go to the transmit pin, which we're going to have all listed out for you. And then, of course, your... Uh, uh, your board and then we're going to have a lead that's going to come off of the vector that's going to go into that as well, too so uh, What we're going to do is we're going to run just the ground and the and the uh, transmit from this that from the uh, From the uh, vector that's going to go into our Arduino That's going to be just carry out through our air unit down to our goggles so just a few connections. We're going to get it started. Let's do some, uh, do some soldering. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a pigtail like this. Uh, you're going to have to run, you have to ground your, not only your power supply and of course your power to uh, your power supply, but you're going to have to ground your uh, air unit to it as well. So I'm going to split off another lead off of this when I solder it on here. And that's what's going to help ground that to the, uh, 
to the Arduino board as well too. All right, so we've got our grounds all tied together. So what I've done is, by the way, something to protect my plane frame with. So I've grounded out my air unit to my, uh, and my uh, voltage regulator together. This is gonna be the plug that's gonna go to the power, power lead that I already had set up in there for a different thing. I, I figured why redo that. So I'm still getting the power off the battery. That's gonna be the four cell. And then I've got another uh, ground lead coming off of this to help ground the air unit to the, uh, to the board as well too. So we're gonna get that buttoned up and then we're gonna do the positive side of this. And I'm gonna show you how all this is gonna to fit together here in just a couple seconds. Now you can power this off of almost anything. Uh, some people are telling me how they're doing it from the air unit. It's um, from the uh, vector five volt rail that doesn't get used a lot. You could power your Arduino off of that. Uh, I don't have that option right now because I'm actually using the micro, the small one. So, uh, and my wires have probably been disconnected for the things that I wasn't using to help save space. So that's why I'm using a little voltage regulator on there. All right, so look, so we got our power lead that's gonna go into here. We've got our air units got already hooked up. So air units got power going to it. Let me try it that way. So it leads to our air unit. So it's gonna get the uh, full four, it's gonna get the full four uh, cells off of that. We've got our leads going into our regulator. And then we're gonna have out to five volts, which is gonna to connect to our Arduino board here in just a couple seconds. We'll see how it goes. And then we've got a ground, so we can ground, uh, do a common ground with our air unit onto the onto the board as well. So because it's important to have all all the everything ground out to where it's supposed to be. And we're also gonna do our hookups for our huge wire here for our uh, air unit. Okay, we're not gonna use all three of these wires, we're just gonna use the two. I've got the yellow as the signal and the brown as the ground, just to help with confusion. So we're gonna end up cutting that off, get it primed up, and we're gonna get them all. Uh, I'm gonna tell you which ones we're gonna use, and we're gonna get it all put into our board, our nano board. All right. Okay, folks, so this is where we're at for right now. We're gonna go ahead and start the soldering. Uh, again, couldn't be easier as far as the connections go to the board. So what we've got is on, uh, of course, I got my power lead. On the side here with power, all we're really gonna be using, the side here with the power, all we're gonna be using is the power and the ground for that side right there, okay? And I'm putting everything kind of coming out this end so I can uh, have easy access when I have to reload hex or do anything else with uh, USB. So we're gonna leave it so everything's kind of pushed out this way. So from here, our wire for our uh, air unit. All we're gonna need is the white transit wire. We're gonna put it to the transit hole right here, which is gonna be white coming from the air units. Again, make sure you get plenty of a lead. And I'm just kind of working my way up the board here. All right, our two grounds. And then lastly, from the vector, we're gonna plug it into D8 right here. Right, so that's the one that we've got from our UART and our vector. That's one of the wire we've got from the UART to our vector, from the vector. We're gonna connect it to our D8 on that. All right, and that is it. So if you've gotten all those other steps done up till now, uh, again, got our power, five volt, coming from a regulator. Again, you can come in from wherever you would like, as long as you're getting like five volts out of that. Uh, we've got our air unit, the TX. We've got our uh, pin from the UART on the vector, going to D8. We've got everything ground. We've got both our air unit ground to it and the vector ground to the same area right there. 
and it comes in a nice little neat uh, bundle. So what we'll probably do is, again, I'll probably slip something over that just to kind of keep it... Uh, uh, we're going to make sure everything works first, and then we'll keep it so it's nice and, uh, nice and neat. And we'll see how it works. So next we're going to do the goggles. We'll put it on and we'll make sure that we're uh, activating telemetry in there. All right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and access our on-screen OSD. My radio on, I got uh, my 1.3, because you're going to need something to be able to get in there and um, configure the configure the configuration. <laughs> All right, so toggle mode switch. There we go. All right. All right, so we're going to go, what you want to do is scroll down to Eagle Eyes Telemetry. Uh, go to the right and then... Okay, so apparently I've lost my mind. What you want to go to is configure UART port. And then uh, you want to adjust the open telemetry. If you go to the Enable Eagle Eyes Telemetry and change that, that's just for the Eagle Eyes if you're going to do it on your computer and get the telemetry through that. Which if you have that, it's pretty cool. But you want to go to configure the UART port for open telemetry for this particular build. Thanks. You're going to go all the way down. That is it. And for there, we're just waiting to think. So now it's going to be outputting uh, information from the UART, hopefully, to your Arduino board if you've done the soldering correctly and everything's all wired up. And then that's going to go to the... Uh, air unit down to your goggles. So we're going to fire it all up. We're going to see what it looks like. Okay, so moment of truth. Uh, we've got everything wired up. We double checked all our polarities. We made sure that uh, everything looks nice and sound. Uh, we've changed everything in our goggles so far. Without putting telemetry, uh, we've got our, our DJI goggles. So we're going to take a look. We're going to fire this thing up and see what it looks like. All right, so let's keep our fingers crossed. No magic smoke or anything weird. Sparks are burst into flames. No smoke, that's a good sign. All right, we got DJI video. Oh, and there it is. Oh, that's awesome. So you can see that's in there. I'm going to change the aspect ratio on my goggles. I run 16.9 right now, so it shows a big thing. Maybe if I can put it on uh, 4.3, you'll be able to see a little bit better as far as the uh, where those elements are at. 4.3, you can probably see those elements a little bit better. Uh, the only thing that I'm concerned about, it says that I've got 14 satellites. And yeah, I might. Let's double check my, let's double check my uh, analog. Yeah, so Analog said that's still waiting on uh, first fix, but that's okay. I'm sure that's something that Vulcan could take a look at and see what you can fix. But uh, I am getting other telemetry on there. Uh, of course, my signal strength, and I've got the battery voltage at 16.2. And everything else looks pretty good, you know. So we're, uh, at least the voltage is in there. It's got GPS coordinates in there as well. Uh, well, the start of it. You can see it says all zeros right now. Hopefully it'll be uh, on there. Uh, once it finally gets its fixed, but I am inside in a basement on a crappy, crappy day. It's why there's no test flight because it's raining like hell outside uh, the hurricane. So I've got uh, battery voltage, top right, amps, uh, milliamps used, feet, and then of course we've got the uh, speed down there. We're not moving, so there's no speed. There's also the latitude longitude lines. On the left-hand side, there is a uh, speedometer as well, too. So it shows the flight mode is in manual. Hey, let's change that and see if it works. Stabilize mode. Oh, 2D. Heading hold active. Ah, so it does show your uh, mode spots. That's good. That's on the left-hand side. Uh, the only thing that, again, concerns me right now is going to be the GPS. And we'll see once it gets a lock, maybe that will clear itself up. Maybe it's just a default setting right now, but... Uh, I can't take it outside, unfortunately, so we'll figure it out. But that's it, man. So that's it. Everything's in there. Running the vector. Uh, you got all your information on there, and uh, it's just that easy. So that's it. So pretty plain and simple. Uh, if you like the video, if you like what we did, make sure that you like and subscribe.
Also, make sure that you join the Facebook group so that if there's any changes to the hex file, you'll be able to download those. You'll know about the changes and get it all updated. So that's it. We appreciate you coming by and uh, look out some more videos from Flyrad FPV. Thanks. Thank you.